Hello and welcome. Today is the day that the Church of England remembers William Tyndale, uh, who translated the scriptures from Greek into straight into English. And uh, one of my one of my really precious things is this, which is a a copy of the original translation um, that he made in fifteen twenty six. He died uh, ten years. Ten years later, he was he was burnt at the stake. He upset a lot of people um, across Europe. Not a popular man. Uh, the reading today is from um, is actually very closely tied to what he to what he wrote, but uh, <laughs> because it's very difficult to read. This is in from the um, from the New Revised Standard Version. It's Mark chapter fourteen, fifty three to. To 65. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now, the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, but their testimony didn't agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And also said, You will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You've heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, to strike him, saying, Prophesy! The guards also took him over beat him and we thank God for his word to us in that scripture you can see really if you think go back to uh, 1526 when the only version of the scriptures that the people the general people could could hear would be the egg explanations given by um, those of their priests that were well enough educated to be able to explain the scriptures to them. Um, and it was very much, um, many, many people, of course, couldn't read. Um, those that could read were, could not necessarily read in, in Latin or in, uh, certainly not in, in Greek. And it took somebody like William Tyndale to sit down and, and, plough through the Greek New Testament and turn it into English um, and it's got the, the version of this that I've got um, says um, uh, original spelling edition which is another way of saying really hard to read edition but it's the the power that must have been behind that idea of actually being able to read the scriptures and rather being rather than being told second hand what had happened which is the way uh, actually throughout history that uh, the people learnt the story of Christ rather than being told second hand they were able to read accounts that were written close to the time uh, of, of everything happening and it did change their minds it did change their hearts it woke them um, to the power, the true power of the gospel. 
so I think that the the real message here is that we need to read the Bible for ourselves. The reading that we had uh, is about really people trying to give testimony against him against Jesus, but not managing to not get in their act together, not having a consistent story, uh, and the way that the 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 history of the church has gone has been through people not necessarily getting the whole story, not being able to read it for themselves, to understand it for themselves. And we have a, a an amazing um, situation now where, where most of us, not everybody, I know not everybody, but most of us can read the Bible in a language that we understand. And uh, we we are then on the front foot when it comes to trying to understand exactly what's going on. The thing about William Tyndale is that he, he did all of this work to translate the scriptures and have the, the book printed and circulated. Um, he had to leave England, it was not safe in England for him, he had to leave and he went to Brussels. Um, but uh, political intrigue of the day was um, was ripe, and uh, he was actually he, he was he was actually um, tried and executed in um, in Brussels, never having returned to his homeland. So the prayer for today comes back and, and thanks. Um, God for sending us William Tyndale and causes us to think about what we need to do. The prayer is, Lord, give to your people grace to hear and keep your word, that after the example of your servant William Tyndale, we may not only profess your gospel, but also be ready to suffer and die for it, to the honour of your name. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, when, uh, when you hear this, I will be working in Romania uh, and about to go off and, and see the Blue Monasteries um, in the Transylvanian Mountains. So uh, I've got an interesting and exciting weekend ahead of me. I hope you do too. Until uh, we meet again, either online or face-to-face, -face. God bless.